Hi everyone, students and parents. Welcome to Career360. When the nation is fired up over the NEET scam and the paper leaks, let's confront why MBBS admissions in India are so cutthroat, so corrupt and out of reach of so many of us. Why do we force students and families into endless agony, anxiety and pressure? Do we deserve this from our government and our society? The data we are about to reveal will shock you, depress you, outrage you, infuriate you. I dare say, this is a white paper on the black deeds of our policy makers. By the end of it all, I am hoping that I will be able to spur some of you into action and hopefully we will all be speaking in one single voice. Listen in on the data that we are about to present, grasp and understand what the data reveals. Let's start with the total test takers in the country. There are two big examinations for students. One is for JE, which is, which is for engineering examination and one for NEET, which is for medical examination. Right. The, in the JE examination, a lot more boys take the examination, whereas in, in NEET examination, a lot more girls take the examination. In fact, in JE, 67% st students are boys. But when you come to NEET examination, 57% students are girls. And this is very important for us to understand. Right. Now, the total medical college in this country all put together is 704, 704 colleges and these 704 colleges have about 1,9170 total medical seats in the country. But the problem starts from here because of these 704 medical colleges, 382 are government colleges, 7 are central universities, 264 are private medical colleges and 51 are private, uni uh, private deemed universities. And that's where the big difference comes. Now, let me show it to you the, the fee that is charged at AIMS Raipur. It is one of the, and I'll explain to you how the AIMS Raipur fees works, right? At AIMS Raipur, the fee that an Indian student who passes out on merit just pays 5856 rupees. Now, let us move to the next one, which is AIMS Jodhpur. At AIMS Jodhpur, an Indian student just pays 5356 rupees and the mess fee is 36,000 rupees. So, what we're dealing with is in a year, the student pays about 40, 45,000 rupees, all inclusive to study at AIMS Jodhpur. In all, if you look at the total central universities that you have in the country, there are seven of them. The total seats that all these things, AIMS, Raipur, Jodhpur and all those things that I've showed you, Delhi and there are many AIMS, the total seats that they have is 1,180. The average fee per annum is just 22,979 per annum. The total average cost over the five years, including mess and hostel and everything, in our opinion, works out to about 3.65 lakh rupees. Now, let us move to the public medical colleges in the country. These are actually owned by the government, different state governments or the medical college has been built with public investment, right? In which case, the government regulates the fee and it works out well for us. The first one I am showing is Pandit B.D. Sharma Medical College in Rotak. The fee here, if you notice very closely, is 30,000 rupees per annum. Then you have the admission fee, the student fund, all those things. But in year one, our estimate is that the student ends up paying just 59,620 rupees, 59,620 rupees per annum at this particular public medical college. The second one I'm showing you is in Mumbai. You know, earlier I sh showed you Rotak. Now I'm showing you M Mumbai because the public institutions in the country charge a similar kind of fee. It there is not much massive difference. In this case, in, in Mumbai, the Lokmanya Tilak Municipal Co Medical College in, in Sion in, uh, in Mumbai charges a term fee of 1.14 lakh rupees per annum. And then you have the development fund fee, this, that and all. But all put together, the total cost would not be more than 5 lakh rupees over the next 5 years. 5.5 lakh rupees, right? So, this public medical college or government medical college is what we call them. In all, in India, we have 382 of them who have a total number of seats of 52,225. The average fee that a student pays in this college, average, which means we're talking of a weighted average of all the seats that you have multiplied by all the fee that is charged at each of the seat in different medical colleges, comes to 73,969, close to 74,000 rupees, let's say, right? The total cost of education, including hostel, mess and everything, would not be more than 6.2 lakh rupees, right? So, you actually have the central universities at just about 3.6 lakhs and now you have the public medical colleges at 6.2 lakhs. So, that's what we are talking of. Between 3.5 lakhs to 6.5 lakhs is what we are talking of. But this is where the story stops. And I'll explain to you why I'm saying this. The other two we talked about is private medical colleges and deemed universities, right? What is the cost of medical education uh, in, in private space? Let's understand that. I'm now right now showing to you one particular college called American Institute of Medi Medical Sciences, Udaipur. This is in Udaipur. What is the fee that is, uh, uh, that is charged for the state nature seats? It is 18.9 lakh per annum. 
and for the all india nature seeds it's 25 lakh rupees per annum it is per annum and the hostel fee is 2.1 lakh per annum extra so the at the least a student is spend, spending at least 21 lakh rupees between tuition fee and hostel facility and add to that the caution money the admission fees the others and everything you are actually spending about 1.25 crores over the 5 years time and by the way this is first year things and it will keep moving on it, some of the expenditure keeps increasing right so once we understand the fee structure let's understand the overall st structure of the private medical college in india at this point in time we have 264 medical colleges the total number of seats that we have is 42515 the average fee per annum is 12.76 lakh these excluding mess hostel and everything remember that but the total cost that a student is likely to spend is close to about 78.82 lakhs or close to 80 lakh rupees so we moved from 3.6 lakhs to 6.2 lakhs now 80 lakhs for private medical college and it is just begun the problem is just begun let's look at the next data set i am now showing you deem university which is another fourth category of medical colleges that we have in the country i am showing you the fee structure of dy patel medical college where the fee at a merit basis is 26.5 lakh the eligibility fee is 2 lakh the hostel fee is 3.05 lakh per annum and the caution money deposit is 50000 so if you look at it between hostel fee and the tuition fee itself right we're dealing with about 29.55 lakh or 30 lakh rupees over five years a student spends 1.5 crores a year to study 1.5 crores now let's look at the overall data set the overall data set for deem university suggest that we actually have 51 deem universities in the country the total number of seats that we have is just 10250 the average fee per annum is 20.52 lakh 20.52 lakh if you add the hostel mess and everything a student is likely to spend about 1.22 crore rupees per annum to pursue mbbs in these 10250 seats and that is the core of the problem so we talked of the you know very good price structures of central universities a decent price structure of the state public uh, medical colleges price price structure of the private medical colleges and the price structure of the deem universities in the country were very very expensive I'll now come to a larger issue that we have. We talked of whether NEET actually drives meritocracy. Let us understand how, why it, it it's a question mark in my head, and you should also be questioning that. In 2024, you actually had one lakh nine thousand seats, but the total students who qualified for the examination is thirteen lakh sixteen thousand. Out of a total twenty four lakh students who took the test, thirteen lakh sixteen thousand students qualified for the test. Right, all of us have taken the examination. a typical pass percentage is 35 percent or 40 percent right depending on which state you study in it's it ranges at the least at 30 percent but typically most of the states say you need to get at least 35 percent mark to pass an examination but in the case of neat that standard has been lowered dramatically in 2022 the pass percentage is 16.36 percent a student who got 117 117 marks of a possible 720 was deemed to have been qualified in 2023 the pass per, uh, percentage the qualification percentage is 137 on a possible 720 remember this year 67 students got 720 on 720 but in this particular case in 2023 137 is the pass qualification mark in neat which is 19% marks of a pos uh, um, that is possible right 137 on 720 which is 19% marks and over the last 6 years when you look at data the pass percent the qualification percentage is hovering around 20% so for neat or for national medical commission which you know conducts this examination through nta the pass qualification percentage is not 35% that you and i are used to but 20% but why do they do that they only have 1 lakh seats why do they need 13 lakh students to qualify why can't they limit themselves to 5 lakh students being qualified because of the 5 lakh for sure 1 lakh will claim the seat right no they don't they don't because when the fee is 1 crore 1.25 crore 1.5 crore many of the students fall apart the seats that you have in private universities and deem universities are typically what i call a reservation for the rich you talk of meritocracy let's talk of meritocracy and these 55000 seats that are there for in private medical college and deem universities because the fee is 80 lakhs and above not more than 2% of india can actually afford that the other 98% even if they get a good score and can get into it someone who got 500 marks but, but will still not prefer a private medical college which goes to a student who got 110 marks 120 marks because they can those guys can afford it and this student who got 500 out of 720 cannot afford it let me explain to you with data again 
I am now talking of the cutoffs that we have for deemed private universities, right? In ACS Medical College in Chennai, a student who got 137 marks of a possible 720 with a rank of 10 lakh 12,392 got a seat. And this I am talking of 2023 data, just be clear about it. 2024, the counseling has not even started. When you go down further, Sri Balaji Medical College, 137 marks, rank of 10 lakh 9,000, you get a seat. Arupadai, we do medical college in Puducherry, 10 lakh 5,000, 138 marks, you get a seat. You further keep going down, at 110 marks also, you actually get a seat in Pondicherry when the rank is 11 lakh 91,412. 11 lakh 91,412, which means when you only have 1 lakh 6,000 seats in 2023, a student who got 11 lakh 91,000 also could lay a claim on an MBBS seat. And the data that I'm showing is from the NMC website where they actually show the entire counseling data and what are the last cutoff in each of the colleges. The entire problem doesn't stop here. You know, we talked of the fee structures and all, but it's just, again, I'm saying it is just the tip of the iceberg. I'll now move to the NRA fees that is, you know, charged by this, some of these colleges. In Bharti Vidya Pet Medical College, the fee for an NRA student per annum is $85,050. $85,050. If you multiply by 5, the student is likely to pay 4.25 lakh dollars, which is 4 crore rupees. Let's look at the next, another college also, just to put this in perspective. I'm now showing you the, the cost sheet for the Sri Balaji Medical College and Hospital in Chennai. What is the fee that NRS pay? It is $60,000 per annum. 60,000, which means over five years, they pay $300,000, which is the fee itself is 2.5 crore rupees. So essentially what we're dealing with is the NRA fee, is between three and four crore rupees and that is what ma many of the medical colleges have and what does it lead to it leads to massive question mark on the merit of these students right so the thing is because of this this kind of a inflated uh, pricing that you have the merit falls in Bharti Vidya paid the need score of a NARA student who got 140 and a rank of 9.96 lakh has got a seat in B uh, Dean University again a rank a score of 121 on 720 with a rank of 11,10,592, got a seat. And the, if you look at the merit now, you also have a student in, you know, there's a college called Institute of Medical Sciences and SUM Hospital, Bhuvaneshwar, Orissa, right? In this Orissa-based college, a student who got 107 marks, 107 marks on a possible 720, which means we're dealing with a percentage which is just about 14%, if I'm not wrong, with a rank of 12,15,000, got a seat. So every time when you increase the price, of the, of, the, of the course, your merit actually is falling. And that you can see every single time. And that seems to be happening only in private medical colleges because public medical co colleges, students are willing to take it because they can afford it. In private, it's not about what is the uh, rank, whether you get it by the rank. It's not just the rank. The biggest filter here is, can you afford to pay the fee, which is between 80 lakh and one and a half crore and at NRA at four crores. And that is the bigger problem that we're dealing with. I'll show you with the next slide something else which is more important. When you drive these things, when the fee in public education is about, you know, between three and a half lakh to six and a half lakh, and in private education between eighty lakh and one and a half crore, students who cannot, you know, afford the private medical college and cannot get into the public medical college, they fall into the trap of studying or pursuing MBBS abroad, and it's creating a bigger problem for this country. You have uh, heard a lot of these stories about what happened to the students who studied in Ukraine and who came back to India and didn't know what to do about it. It's, it continues to happen in Russia recently, Georgia, most of the CIS countries, Philippines, China. Most of our Indian students started looking at options to pursue MBBS outside of the country because private education is outside their reach and public education, they don't have the merit. And when you get into that situation, Last year in 2023, the number of students who, and by the way, people who go abroad to pursue MBBS, when they come back to India, have to pass an examination called FMG, which is Foreign Medical Graduate Examination. And this examination, there are a lot of students who are now appearing for that. In fact, in 2023, the number of students who appeared for FMG was 62,077, 62077. And in our estimate, the number of students who pursued MBBS in India and were appearing for a similar exam examination in 2023, which is the MBBS India examination, was 63,250. Because in 2018, which is a passing out batch for 2023, the total seats that were, that were available was 63,250. So we now have a situation where the number of students who are studying abroad for MBBS and the number of students studying in India for MBBS is almost similar. 
and this is a very alarming thing because what exactly ha is happening here is we are losing students, we are putting them to great risks, we are losing foreign exchange, we are not creating medical seats and we are pushing them out of India and importing them back into a structure where possibly they have not studied and skilled themselves as much as what an Indian student would be doing because many of these medical colleges who went uh, where the students go outside of India uh, especially in the CIS countries and all the education level there and the standard and of the skill set that are there is very very suboptimal as compared to what you have in India the kind of learning that you have in a medical college in India where you are attached to a hospital and go around with the doctor and keep looking at the doctors many of these hospital uh, you know uh, uh, medical college outside of India are not even affiliated to a hospital they don't have a hospital of their own they don't they're not affiliated to a hospital all you do is classroom learning and that's a bigger problem but the problem doesn't stop here let me show you one more data set right I said, you know, each of these students have to appear for an examination. In 2023, about of the 62,077 who appeared for the examination, just about 10,255 passed, which means almost 84% of them failed the examination, which means they went there, they got a degree from uh, of MBBS from there, but they cannot come back and practice in the country. In 22, it was 23% pass, pass rate. In 21, it was 24% pass rate. But overall, the pass rate in FMG is just about 20%. So, one in five pass four in five fail the examination. So you go out because you can't do MBBS in India. You go out, you're not as skilled as what an Indian doctor, doctor would be because the facilities there including hospital affiliation is not as good as what you have in the country by mandate. There's one more thing that actually struck me when I was looking at data and this is a very, very serious thing that I hope someone investigates and someone puts their foot down on that. Now, when you define EWS, which is economically weaker section, it means that you cannot afford the fee and that's why you're coming through that category, right? And the, uh, the EWS, uh, as far as my understanding is concerned, is about 8 lakh rupees per annum is the uh, uh, salary limit that you've done, that anyone who's earning less than 8 lakh rupees is under the EWS category and they can claim through the reservation system of EWS into a public institution. But what shocked us is that about 200 of these EWS students paid a crore or, 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 or of rupees or, or more and joined deemed universities. I'm not even getting at state private medical colleges, which will also be a lot more. Of the 10,000 seats that you have, 2% seats in deemed universities are claimed or paid for by the EWS students. This opens a big question mark on the kind of certification that they have of calling themselves EWS. Because this is for me a shocker because if you're earning less than 8 lakh rupees, it's just sustenance level. You can just survive, barely survive with that money. And here you have paying 1.32 crores in Bharat Medical College and Hospital in Chennai, 1.01 crores in Vinayaka Missions, 1.32 crores in Santosh Medical College, 1.26 crores in Lakshmi Narayanam Institute of Medical Sciences and so on. So this brings me to a larger question. You know, the minister very recently has said that India has one doctor for 834 population of this country. And we call this the India's doctor population ratio. WHO recommends that it should be one doctor for at least 1000 people of, of any country. Right. But here, there's a bit of a jugglery that happened. They also added 5.65 lakh Irish doctors to be doctors and then change this ratio. The real picture actually comes from an address given by the former Vice President of India, Sri Venkai Naidu, where he talked of uh, doctor population ratio and he said noting the low doctor to population ratio at 1000 1 is to 1511 that's what he arrived at there by the way this 1 is to 1511 is the data that was uh, given by the 15th finance commission of india in india against the WHO norm of 1, 1 is to 1000 right so as i see it now i think we have about 1000 for every 1400 people we actually have one doctor Give or, give or take a hundred plus or minus, right? And that needs to be improved. So what do we end with this entire thing? What, is the, what does this data say at this point in time? We are the only country where 48% of the seats are reserved for the 2% people. Because in 20, uh, 2024, of the 1.09 lakh seats that are there, 52,765 seats are in the private space or deemed university space, right? Two, this is not meritocracy. NEAT is not about meritocracy. NEAT is about creating an order so that is, or, and a larger base of people so that anyone can pick up students at the fee that they would want to charge. Because at 107 score also, 107 out of 720 also, student got a seat in MBPS. Whereas at 500, 550, 600, people gave up because they cannot pay the fee. 
right and with all these things we are also pushing our students to study abroad and last, in 2023 we had as many students coming back into India and trying to take the FMG examination to be a doctor in India as we have doctors who joined in 2017, 2018 and passed out in 23 which is about 63,000 students right and we also have a situation where non-resident Indians are willing to pay 4 crore rupees to pursue MBBS in India so where do we go from here what kind of doctors would we create when a student is paying one and a half two crore rupees to be a doctor in the country how much public service would they be able to do some of them might be on loans also for all that you know but the conscience the collective conscience of this country must demand that we must increase supply at affordable pricing so that students who are going abroad can at least stay back in India. Students who are wanting to be a doctor can at least, at least have a better proportion and give more permission to more medical colleges, especially in public institutions and also in private institutions, as long as they comply to a basic demand that the fee would be regulated for a certain period of time so that the country can actually have more students staying back in India and pursuing MBBS in India. The country can have more doctors. The country can have more doctors with a conscience. The country can have more doctors who will be there for public service. And that is very, very important. I hope this data, you know, opens up your eyes. I hope this data will speak to you and tell you what is wrong with the medical education in the country. I hope this white paper on the black deeds of the policymakers is corrected as soon as possible. Thank you so much.